Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Hope you're all doing great. In the last video, we investigated why this Toyota was hesitating to rev beyond about 5,000 RPM and found some dirt around the fuel pump and the fuel tank. We were not able to clean inside the fuel tank because there was a lot of gasoline in there. So we ended up cleaning just the fuel pump strainer and putting everything back together. After embarking on a long journey and getting the fuel level in the tank as low as we can, we are now going to go ahead to clean inside the tank as much as we can and also replace the fuel pump strainer. So let's dive right into it. In case you are yet to see the first part of the video, I left a link in the description down below. So in taking apart this fuel pump assembly, not too many tools are required as you can see. Also we have just one line going out of the assembly. So that implies that constant pressure is being fed through the single fuel line to the engine and there is no return line from the engine back to the tank. Right now we have the fuel pump assembly taken out and looking in there we can see some baffles. By the way I used a bolt and a piece of plastic wrap to block the supply hole into the fuel pump area. The baffles are present in the tank to prevent the gasoline from sloshing around while the vehicle is moving. Excessive sloshing could cause starvation of gasoline to the engine and cause the vehicle to stall. Unfortunately, the baffles prevent full access into the tank through the fuel pump passes hole. So with the fuel pump area blocked off temporarily, I used the cover of a aerosol can to scoop all the gasoline out of the area like I'm showing here and checking out the container I discovered that we had more of rust and that was when I found out the tank was made of metal and was literally rusting and causing all the issues so here's the bowl of gasoline we can see the rust particles in there I didn't want to go through the hassle of taking the whole tank out, so I resorted to clean just the four pump area. So moving ahead, I got a piece of foam and wiped down the area thoroughly like I'm showing. Obviously we can see some gasoline trickling into the area because I didn't block the supply hole totally just to restrict gasoline from getting in there. So I kept on wiping with the foam till I was satisfied. Upon each wipe, I realized it was mostly rust and not gravel or sand like I'd earlier suspected. After wiping thoroughly with the foam, I proceeded to get a piece of lint-free tissue like I'm showing right now and further wipe down the area to ensure it was as clean as possible. So taking out the tissue, we can see how dirty got, still got a lot of dirt out of there. After thoroughly cleaning with the paper towel, next I went ahead to take out the plug and the plastic wrap like I'm showing right here to allow gasoline flow into the fuel pump area. I must confess it reminded me of electricity dams and how water would flow across them. It looked pretty cool I must confess. There's just something soothing and calming about seeing fluid move in such a manner. I guess I need to go to the beach or visit a pond sometime soon. So here's the plug I used, just a bolt and some plastic, plastic wrap. So there it is. That's the bolt right there and the plastic wrap. So moving ahead, let's see what the Fuel pump area looks like after all the cleaning. Looks pretty good. Obviously, there are no longer any particles in there. So, we'll move on to the next stage of the project, which is replacing the fuel pump strainer. So, moving over to my workspace, here we are. So, I'm going to carefully expose the base of the actual electric fuel pump so that we can get the locking nut off and then slide off the strainer itself. So I just carefully pried it off and then using a flat blade screwdriver, I carefully walked off the 
lock in knot like I'm showing here. So with the lock in knot or tab removed, this is what we have. It's quite small. Make sure you don't lose it if you don't have a replacement. I can easily lift off the fault mount strainer, set it aside. So I went with a Spectra brand. I think the part number was SDR46, well wrapped and packaged. So opening up the wrap, here's what we have. It had a cover on there to prevent dirt from getting into the actual strainer. So walking it on there like I'm showing, press it on as hard as you can. And then I used the base of my screwdriver to tap it onto place. Obviously the base of my screwdriver was soft, so it wasn't going to damage anything. And then using a socket, I pressed on the locking knot a tab. By the way, it came with a new one. That's what I'm taking out of the wrap right now. So getting that out right now. Yeah, quite small, so you need to be careful so you don't lose it. There it is. So I press it on as hard as I could with my fingers. And then afterwards, I used a small socket. I think it was number five. Not very sure. But get a socket of comparable size. And then using the base of the screwdriver again, I tapped it on there so that I got a very tight seal on there. So ain't going nowhere. Tapped it on again for assurance. <laughs> With the full pump strainer fully installed, it was now time to get the base back in its position. I took out the grommet, installed it at the base, and then carefully slid it back into position like I'm showing here. And that was how I got the full pump strainer replaced. Next, it was time to reinstall the whole assembly back in the vehicle. So straightforward process. So, we're gradually coming to the end of this video. Hope you learned a lot from this, that you don't always need to replace your foil pump. It may just be some dirt around the foil pump strain and foil tank. And you can also do this at home, save yourself some money, and also ensure that things are not too bad in your gasoline tank. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video. I think the parts for the Honda finally arrived, so I picked them up. So hope to resume work on that by the next video. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.